Stroby Studios presents Michael Helgens and Greg Kilberger in The Watson Files. Coming to you from the illustrious Stroby Studios in the heart of America, this is Craig Dolan. And now, let's join the doctor and see what story he has for us today. Come in. Good evening, Mr. Dolan. Hello, Dr. Watson. How are you this evening? I'm doing just fine, thank you. I'm glad to hear it. Are you excited for our live show on Thursday? I am indeed. I believe we'll be starting at 6.30 at Uptown Bills in Iowa City. That sounds right. And I understand that people will be able to watch a live stream of the show? That's correct. They simply need to go to strobystudios.com at 6.30 Central Standard Time. Which I believe would be just after midnight on Friday morning over in London. Yes, and 9.30 Friday morning for our friends down under in Sydney. All right. Well... Shall we get to tonight's story, then? Yes. I believe you're going to finish the story about Governor Smith's campaign manager. Indeed. As you recall, Stefan had been found dead and missing his hand. The governor indicated that he may have had a case handcuffed to himself. And it turned out that the governor was the murderer this time. Yes, unfortunately. I'd certainly like to know what would lead a man like Alexander Smith to kill someone. Indeed. Well... After the trial, Holmes and I went to see the governor, uh, Alex, at the prison. Holmes said that something was bothering him and asked me to come along to get more information about a case that he wanted to look into. Watson, I'm glad to have you along on this little outing. Always happy to help. But you still haven't told me what sort of case it is that we're looking into. We can only look into it if we find it, but we do have a description of it, so maybe we'll just stumble across it. You're not making any sense. This is the entrance to the prison. What are we doing here? I thought we'd pay a little visit to Alexander to see if he'll tell us what was in the case so we can avoid the tedious task of tracking it down. Ah, you mean the case that the governor's... Former governor. Of course. The case that the former governor's assistant was carrying. I do indeed, Watson. The dreaded case has been bothering me ever since we heard about it, and I can't just let it rest. I see. So, we're going to try and find the missing case. Or at least suss out what was in the thing. After that, we'll know if there's more to be done. Do you suppose the case has more evidence against Alexander? I have a suspicion that there is more to it than that, Watson. Alexander was tight-lipped on the subject during the trial. I remember that. He would definitely change the subject whenever the prosecutor got close to asking about the contents. He was, after all, a politician. They are quite good at not answering questions. Indeed. Here we are, then. Let's go see what we can find out. Spencer, Jack, good to see you. How are you getting along in here? Prison isn't so bad. I'm glad I passed through that legislation for the new prison to reduce overcrowding in cells before I wound up here myself. These new facilities are fairly comfortable. That's, uh, good to hear. Quite. We came to ask you a few questions about your aid. Spencer, I've already been found guilty and locked away here. The case is closed. And I would like to open it, but first I need to find it. What did you do with the case that you removed from your assistant? I already told you when you called there's nothing in the case worth finding. And I told you that you wouldn't have killed your assistant if the case didn't contain damaging information. I've come here to submit my questions to you in person under the theory that you'll eventually slip up, as all criminals do, and then I'll have what I require from you. You can ask your questions, but my story will not change, Spencer. I think I'd prefer Mr. Holmes from you. Very well. What can I do for you, Mr. Holmes? I would like for us to begin at the beginning. You said that there were questionable donations made to your campaign when we were looking into the murder of your assistant. He obviously was not hiding them. It was you... Who were these mysterious investors? I'd rather not talk about it, and the Fifth Amendment says that I don't have to. At least you admit that you're guilty of something more than murder. Are you concerned that your life sentence will be lengthened? No, it's not that, it's just... Then why are you holding back? 
He said if I ever told you, Spencer, m Mr. Holmes, about our involvement with each other, that he'd kill me. Who? I'm not going to say it until he does, though I'm certain that the answer is rather clear, Watson. You know who it was? Quite a number of people wish me ill will, but most of them are still in prison. I still don't get it. Perhaps, Alexander, you would care to enlighten the good doctor. If you tell us now, we might be able to keep you safe. I would like to help you, but I can't risk it. Very well. We can play hardball as well. Watson, please contact the local papers. Tell them that I'll have a story about math professors and campaign finance and murder that they'll want to print in tomorrow's editions. You can't do that. He'll kill me. So it was Professor Marty? <sighs> All right, yes, but you have to keep me safe. Alexander, you should choose your friends more carefully. If the professor wants you dead, then there is little that I, or anyone else for that matter, can do for you. <laughs> I'm doomed. There is one thing we can do, Holmes. What's that, Watson? We could catch Professor Marty before he can kill Alex. Hmm. I suppose we could do that, but we don't know how to get in touch with him. The case! No, I don't think that a case would help just now. I don't really have anything that I need no, to carry No, the case and... that I took from Stefan. It can help. But I thought that it contained nothing of value. What if I could help you find it, Spencer? Mr. Holmes. <sighs> oh, fine, Mr. Holmes. What if I could help you find it? Then could you help keep Professor Marty away from me? I suppose that depends on the contents of the case. I know you're fond of me, Watson, but I wasn't aware that you had assumed my last name. That might help with the whole slogan thing, though. Two homes are better than one, comes to mind. Uh, sorry about jumping in there. I think I'll stick with Watson if it's just the same to you. I suppose that's for the best. Perhaps I should adopt your last name. Watson, your mind. We can help. I worry about you sometimes. What is going on here? I was having a little fun at your expense, Mr. Smith. Uh, I'm confused. He has that effect on people. Now then, where is the case and what are the contents that you believe will help us to protect you? Uh, the case is located in a safe deposit box at the Midland Savings Bank. You'll have to get the key from my wife. And what's in the case? He said to use it if I ever got into trouble and needed to find him. There are also records that show his involvement in getting me elected. How did Stefan get his hands on these things? He broke into my apartment after he confronted me about the strange additions in our campaign records. I thought I had assuaged his fear, but when I realized that the records were missing, I knew I had to find him and, well, you know the rest. Hmm, that is most interesting. Very well, we may have a few more questions. Don't go anywhere, Alex. Very funny, Mr. Holmes. Mrs. Smith was actually a rather nice woman. I'd have said the same about Mr. Smith before we discovered the truth. That's rather cynical, don't you think? Perhaps. At least she located the key quickly. And this is the box, I think. And there is the case. And Stefan's hand. I wonder how long it would have taken the bank personnel to discover it. Probably not too much longer. It is starting to smell a bit. Maybe we should just open the case and let Officer Weathers have the rest. An excellent idea. Here are the documents that show the transfers to Alexander's bank account from Professor Marty's private holdings in Sweden. And what's with this wooden box? I'd be careful with that, Watson. We should probably open it in the laboratory in my blast box where I open my mail. Uh, yes. I suppose that's a good idea. Off we go, then. You can call Max on the way. I think we're just about ready to open the box now, Watson. You should put on these glasses just to be safe. Thank you. Well, at least there wasn't an explosion. No, I suppose there wasn't. That's a good thing, right? Of course it is. Well, can we see what is in the box now? Be my guest. It's a cell phone. Check the call log, or perhaps the contact list. No calls have been made, and there is only one contact. But I don't think you're going to like it. Who is it? It says Quinton. The riddling fellow. He's in jail. Should I call it? No, if someone other than Alexander calls, then whoever answers will likely not give us the information that we need. Back to prison, then. 
Indeed. We found this phone with a single contact. You're going to use it to call this fellow and learn the location of Professor Marty. Oh, um, all right. I suppose I can do that. I've turned on the speakerphone and the warden has given us the use of this conference room. All right, give me the phone. Just make sure that it doesn't take very long, Mr. Smith. This is Quentin on the phone. I trust that you are alone? Yes, I need to speak with Marty now. You've been arrested and sent to jail. I am certain that you have failed. How is it that I am to know that to the professor you will go? I have powerful friends and I've had this phone smuggled in. The police are close to discovering the professor's location and I need to warn him. And what if with the police you are working? That would not leave the professor smirking. Fine, don't trust me. But I'll make sure that Professor Marty knows that you're the one responsible for his capture when he's sharing a cell with me because you wouldn't tell me how to get in touch with him. Yes, I suppose I see your point. The professor is not fond of the joint. Wait a moment now, I'll connect you somehow. Fine, fine, just get him on the... <sighs> now he's got me doing it. Good afternoon, Governor Smith. This is going to be a very brief conversation. Quinton tells me that you have some information for me. That's right. The police are closing in on you. I'll move. Was there anything else? Yes. How are you going to get me out of here? I'm afraid you've become something of a liability. Our business is at an end. We had a deal. I helped you. And I got you elected. We're even. Good day, Governor. Give my regards to Mr. Holmes, though he's probably there listening. How could you know that? I have spies everywhere. They saw Holmes and his puppet Watson going into the bank where you hid the case. I'm glad we had this chance to talk, even if it was brief. Don't worry, Mr. Holmes. We'll be seeing each other in person soon enough. I'm sure we will, and sooner than you think, if I have my way. We'll see about that. Good day, Mr. Holmes. Was that enough, Max? We were able to get a trace from the 911 system. I've sent several units over to the address. He'll be gone before they can get there, but maybe we can find something that will keep us close on his trail. I hope so. Now I'm confused again. We had Officer Weathers place a trace on the call. And now you have served all of your usefulness, Mr. Smith. I hope that our paths do not cross again. I'm sorry that it had to end like this. It didn't have to. I take it that the professor was not at the house when you arrived. He is a slippery one, but there were a number of things that he wasn't able to take with him when he fled that helped us later. Such as? I'm afraid the pursuit of Professor Marty will have to wait until another time. It seems you've adopted a bit of Holmes' propensity to keep people in the dark. Hmm. I prefer to think that I'm keeping you in suspense. All right. Well, either way... I can't wait to hear more later. You won't be disappointed. I'm sure I will not. Tonight's Watson Files Adventures was written by Michael Helgens and directed by Scott Strosall. Spencer Holmes and Dr. Watson were played by Michael Helgens and Greg Kilberger. Additional voices were provided by Steve Rimpici. Until next week, this is Craig Dallin saying good night from Stroby Studios. You know who it was? Quite a number of pi- oh, sorry. <laughs> it's not a quite. <laughs> it's quite, it's just not quite comma. <clears throat> quite a number of people wish me ill will, but most of them are still in prison. I wonder how long it would have taken the bank personnel to discover it. That sounded like Dracula. Let me try that again. <laughs> how long it would have taken the bank personnel to discover it. Uh, <laughs> uh yes. I suppose that's a good idea. Off you open we... your mail in the plastic box? <laughs> right, as we establish in The Dying Detective. I know, but I just love that. Careful when you open it.
<laughs> I read that and I read that last night. He's like, uh, yes, yes. sure. <laughs> I mean, where else would you open mail, Watson? Seriously, any of it could explode. Kitchen the table. Kitchen on the counter, I... This letter from the insurance company might be a bomb. It's true. <laughs> Well, you have gotten dangerous things in the mail. I have Deputrian freaking America. Right. Fair enough. Fair in enough. the mail. <laughs> I could have died. All right.